Good morning, everyone. So before we start our class, please pick up pieces of papers on the floor, straighten your chairs, and get ready to pray. Diane, please lead the prayer. Let us all bow down our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy work be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have your seat. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, the papers for your quiz later will serve as your attendance. So today, we're going to talk about lenses. But before that, let us first test your brain if you still recall the concept of refraction. Who can tell me what is refraction of light? Ma'am? Yes, Rice? Refraction is a bending of light. Very good! Refraction is the bending of light as it passes from one transparent substance into another. It also happens with other waves such as sound and water. Light refracts whenever it travels at an angle into a substance with a different refractive index or what we call the optical density. This change of direction is caused by a change in speed. For example, when light travels from air into water, it slows down, causing it to continue to travel at a different angle or direction. Okay, so for example, this pencil and this glass of water, observe what happens when I put this pencil inside the glass of water. What can you see? Ma'am? Yes. It bends. Yes, it looks like it is broken. Now, what causes the refraction of light? Anyone? Ma'am? Yes, the Diane. Light travels at different speeds. Very good. The causes of refraction is that the light travels at different speeds in different media. So this change in the speed of light when it moves from one medium to another causes it to bend. Refraction is caused due to the change in speed of light when it enters from one medium to another. So before we um, proceed to our main topic, let us first discuss our main objectives for this lesson. The learners should be able to first differentiate convex from concave lens, construct ray diagrams to determine the location, orientation, size, and type of image form in curved mirrors and identify ways in which the properties of mirrors and lenses determine their use in optical instruments. So we need to achieve these objectives upon finishing this lesson. Okay, I will give you set of lenses, a concave lens in a concave Next, let's. Now, tell me the difference between the two. Okay, so you are now holding into two lenses, a concave lens and a convex lens. You observe the two and differentiate them based on their appearance. Who can describe to me what concave lens looks like? Ma'am? Oh, yes, sir. Uh. A concave lens is thinner in the middle and thicker at the edges. Very good. So as you can see and as you can feel, the concave lens is thinner at the middle and thicker at the edges. How about a convex lens? Ma'am? Yes, Andrea. A convex lens is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. Very good. So while the convex lens is thicker in the middle and thinner at the Edges. Okay, so for example, are you familiar with this thing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what is this called? A spoon. Very good. This is a spoon. 
So a spoon is a curved surface which acts like a mirror. So the front part of the spoon is a concave while at the back side of the spoon is a convex. Okay, so let's get familiar with the terminologies that are used for lenses. So there are many types of lens, but let us concentrate on spherical lenses. So a spherical lens is a piece of glass or transparent material having at least one spherical surface. So a spherical lens can be convex or concave. Lenses that are thicker at the middle than at the edges are called the convex lens. Those that are thicker at the edges than at the middle are called the concave lenses. So convex lenses are further subdivided into um, double convex, this one, the plano convex, this one, the concave convex, this one, or which is also called the convex meniscus. Um, concave lenses can be double concave. We have the plano concave or the convexo concave or the concave meniscus. The optical center P of the lens is the point through which all light rays passes without being bent. So, okay, so when you make a ray diagram, the one that is la uh, labeled P is the optical center of the lens. So convex lenses are converging lenses. When a beam of parallel rays falls on a convex lens, the rays are refracted and converge to a point called the principal focus or F. Concave lenses are diverging lenses. Parallel rays falling upon a concave lens spread out. When extended, the refracted rays will appear to come from a point in front of the lens. So this point is considered the principal focus for the concave lens. Next is the focal length or F. So the focal length is the distance from the optical center of the lens to the principal focus. Because a lens has two surfaces, it has two focal points, one in front and the other at the back of the lens. So for thin lenses, these focal points are equidistant from the center of the lens even though the curvature on each side is different. So for converging lenses, the principal focus is the focal point behind the lens. The other focal point, which is in front of it, is considered the secondary focus. For diverging lenses, the principal focus and the secondary focus are the focal points in front and behind the lens. So the focus and the secondary focus, the F and the F1, are used to denote the principal focus and the secondary focus. So the principal axis is the line joining the optical center and the principal focus. So this lens terminology will be used when you do the ray diagram. So but before that, let us first um, explore the refraction of light with this activity entitled the law of love. So what we need is to fill a glass with water. We have one here. Draw a big arrow on a piece of paper. So I have made one. This one. Put the piece of paper at the back of the glass. Look through the front of the glass as you slowly move the paper behind. Okay, so please observe. Okay, look at this arrow. In which direction does it point? To the left. Okay, very good. It is pointing to the left. So let's observe what happens when you put this one at the back of this um, glass. Okay, let me see first. Okay, what can you see there? The arrow goes to its opposite side. Okay, very good. The arrow is now pointing at the opposite side, which is the right side. Okay, so who can tell me why this happened? Ma'am? Oh, yes. Jay. Because of refraction, ma'am. Okay, very good. 
because of refraction. So light traveled from the air through the front of the glass jar, through the water, through the back of the glass jar, and then back through the air before heating the picture. So whenever light passes from one medium into another, it refracts. So the water acts as a magnifying glass which bends the light toward the center. So the light taps together at the focal point and beyond the focal point. So the image looks reversed because the light that was on the right is now on the left and vice versa. Okay, so we have here the differences between a convex and a concave lens. So who can read the first um, comparison? Ma'am. Yes, Deya. On convex lens, on passing the light through the lens, it bends the light ray, right rays towards each other. While on the conca concave lens, on passing the light through the lens, it bends the light rays away from each other. Okay, very good. So, the, in convex lens, the light rays bends towards each other. While the con in concave lens, the light rays bends away from each other. The next one, ma'am. Yes, Jane. A convex lens is thicker at the center and thinner at the edges. On the other hand, concave lens is thicker at the edges, thinner at the center. Okay, very good. So the convex lens, just like what you are holding there, is thicker at the center and thinner at the edge, edges, and the concave lens is thicker at the edges and thinner at the center. The next one. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, a convex lens, ma'am, due to the converging rays, it is called a converging lens. While on the concave lens, due to the diverging rays, it is called a diverging lens. Okay, so a converging lens and a diverging lens. It is easy to remember since converging lens is for convex lens and diverging lens is for concave lenses. Next, ma'am. Okay, yes, Jane. The convex lens is used for correction of long-sightedness, while concave lens is used for correction of short-sightedness. Yes, very good. So if you have something wrong in your eyes and then you go to an ophthalmologist, if you are uh, long-sighted, your glasses will be using a convex lens, while if you are short-sighted, then your glasses will be using a concave lens. And then the last one, ma'am, Jaya. A convex lens, ma'am, is also called a positive lens due to a positive focal length nature. While on concave lens, um, it is also called a negative lens due to a negative focal length nature. Okay, let's take note of that. A convex lens is a positive lens and a concave lens is a negative lens. Okay, now, right now, we are using a what we call projector to project our PowerPoint presentation to the screen. Do you know that you can make your own DIY smartphone projector? So I will show you a video on how to make it. Guys, I'm Angelo, and welcome to another episode here at Tech Builder. This week, we're going to make a project that everyone can build and everyone can enjoy. So, we are going to turn these office supplies and this shoebox into a cool and awesome smartphone projector. <laughs> Project, we need to find the following stuff at home. A magnifying glass, a foam board, a roll of masking tape, a cutter, your smartphone, a hot glue gun, a ruler, and don't forget the shoe box itself. Just clean the table up and just grab your magnifying glass. Use your hacksaw to carefully cut up the handle. Once you're done, we'll be using the glass for the projector's lens. You set that aside from now and go grab your shoebox. This will be used as the housing for our project. Now we're interested in the PV. 
Just kidding, you're not really endorsing. We'll open the flaps of the bombs, then reinforce it with lots and lots of hoops. This will prevent it from wobbling later on after we cut a huge hole for the projector's lens. Just do the same thing for the other side, just to make sure. Use your fingers to easily spread out the glue. Then close back the flaps of the box. You don't want to mess this up, so let the glue set for a couple of minutes just to make sure. After the glue dries, position your magnifying glass in the center and use a pencil to trace around it. To cut up an exact hole, you can use your exacto knife and a compass to do the job. It's just like running a circle, but this time you're cutting a perfect downward. If you do get to cut up the cardboard correctly, your magnifying lens should fit perfectly. Once you're satisfied, use hot glue to mount the glass on your cardboard. Once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Oh no, there's a protrusion. Well, we can remove that by using our previous cutout as a stencil, then use an exacto knife to remove the excess cardboard. Let's put the lid back on. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, now we will make the stand that will hold the phone for the projector. I guess we can make that out of foam board. We just have to cut fractions of it and just make sure that it fits perfectly inside of the box. Now for the legs of the stand, we'll have to cut another fraction of foam board and just hot glue them together. Just make sure they stay perfectly good to each other to prevent image distortions from the projections later on. Cut some strips of your sticky double-sided adding tape. Then mount your phone at the center of the stand so that later on the phone will align to the lens of the projector. We're almost done. All that's left is to set your phone to the highest brightness, then lock your screen. So when you play a video, the screen stays upside down. The science behind this is that the lens will inflict the image that will be projected on the wall later on. Okay, this is the final step. Like all projectors, this one needs to be calibrated. You can do so by adjusting the distance of the phone and screen from the projector's lens. In fact, you'll be able to gain focus as you move the phone back and forth. The only tip is just to have fun and play with it. So this is pretty much how you make your own smartphone projector out of a shoebox and some office supplies. Hey, what's up guys? I'm back to Okay, so you have watched um, a video of how to make a DIY projector. So I have made, uh, made one for this class. So don't worry because you're also making one for your performance task. So you need to make a functional projector. So this one is for testing only. Okay, so for our next activity, we're going to test how this DIY projector works. Okay, so I have here your activity sheets. I'll get one and pass. Okay, can somebody please read what are the materials needed? Andrea? DIY projector with remova removable lens. Different lenses. Concave, double concave, convex, or and double convex. Smartphone and whiteboard. Okay, read the procedure. Read everything. Saman ka. Number one, set up your projector and smartphone. Remember that to make the image appear on the screen night right side up, you must put the smartphone smartphone upside down. Second, label your lenses A for concave, B for double concave, C for convex, and D for double convex. Third. Put your first lens, A, con concave in the middle of the box. Fourth, adjust the smartphone inside until you find the clearest image projected on the wall. Note your observations. Fifth, remove the lens and change it to lens B or do double concave. Repeat procedure 3 and 4. Six. Repeat procedure 3 to 5 to test all the lenses. 7. Note all your observations in a sheet of paper. Okay. So you're going to follow the steps and perform the activity. So I'm going to give you um, 10 minutes to do the activity. So you already have your grouping. So just proceed with your group. So you look for a space at the back. 
the learner doing the activity by changing the lens and trying to see what best fit for the projector. Are you done with the activity? Assign presenter for each group. Get ready. I will choose one group to present your observation of the activity. Okay, from group 2, Deya, let us hear your group's conclusion. Upon testing all lenses, a concave double concave, convex, and double convex, the only lens that projected an image to the wall is a convex lens. We need a very dark place to be able to see clearly the image on the wall. We also learned that we need to put the phone upside down for it to be projected on the wall correctly. Very good! So convex lens is used in projector to get magnified image. So specifically, we are using magnifying glass. So how did the magnifying glass make the picture bigger? The answer is that in the shape of the lens. The bigger the lens, the bigger the projected image on the wall so the lens is a convex meaning its sides bend outwards so this allows it to catch bend and focus all the light from the inside of the box and project it onto the wall but why is it that the image is upside down that you need to turn your phone upside down inside so that the projected image on the wall would be correct the reason is that convex lens is like human eyes. So the human eye has a lens similar to a magnifying glass attached to the projector. So what the eye sees comes through the eye's lens upside down, but the brain learns to flip the image right side up. So the magnifying lens flips the image through refracting the light from the phone screen just like your eye flips the light from the world. Okay, so we have here the images formed by convex lens. So the object position, the image position, and the characteristics of the image. So if the object is at infinity and the image position is at F, what is the characteristic of the image, Andrea? Real, inverted, and very small. Okay, if it is um, beyond the the secondary focus and the image position is between the focus and the secondary focus. What is the characteristic of the image? Ma'am? Oh, yes. It's real, inverted, smaller than the object. Okay, very good. Now, if it is at the secondary focus and the image position is also at the secondary focus, what image is produced? The characteristics of image one is real, inverted, same size as the object. Okay, very good. Uh, how about if it is between F and uh, the first focus and the secondary focus and the image position is beyond the secondary focus? Ma'am? Oh, J. It is real, inv inverted, bigger than the object. Okay. At secondary focus and the image position is at infinity, what is the characteristic may J? It has no image since rays are parallel, ma'am. Okay. Then lastly, if it is between secondary focus and the lens, then the image position is in front of the lens. Ma'am? Oh, yes, Anna. It is virtual, upright, bigger than the object. Very good. Okay, so how about in concave lens? What images are formed by concave lens? So for any object distance from the lens, the image formed by a concave lens is virtual, upright, smaller than the object, and located on the same side of the lens as the object. Okay, to test those images, if it is actually formed from what it claims, we have the ray diagram. So we have three points for the ray diagram. First, 
array or rail 1 parallel to the principal axis passes through or when extended appears to pass through the principal axis. So this is what it looks like. Second is array or ray 2 passing through the secondary focus of a converging lens or which when extended appears to pass through the secondary focus of the diverging lens is refracted parallel to the principal axis. And lastly is array or ray 3 passing through the optical center of the lens is not deviated. So I know how you know how to make the ray diagram since you already made that in your mirrors. Okay, now let's have the uses of convex and concave lens to our daily living. So first, we have the magnifying glass. What is a magnifying glass, Andrea? The magnifying, the magnifying glass is an object placed on one side of a convex lens closer to the focal point. So the image of the object is formed on the same side as the object and is highly magnified. Okay, this one is a magnifying glass. So most of the magnifying glass uses convex lens in an object is placed on one side of a convex lens closer to the focal point. The image of the object is formed on the same side as the object and is highly magnified. So the angle subtended at the eye, the position of the image and magnification to those case well depend on the position of the object. So magnifying glass is what we use in our DIY project for. Then we have eyeglasses. Jaya. The convex lens is used for solving the long-sightedness or hypermetropia problem. Okay, so in eyeglasses, for solving long-sightedness, we use convex lens. So when the lenses of the eyes of an individual fail to clearly focus the light of the retina, it causes far-sightedness or near-sightedness problems. So the convex lens is used for solving the long-sightedness or the hypermetropia problem by bending the light ray that shortens the focal length and thus um, properly focuses the light ray on the retina. Next is the camera. Yes, Samantha. In the camera, the convex lens is used to focus and magnify the image. Okay, your cameras are used to magnify the images. So there are numbers of lenses that are inserted where one concave lens is followed by a convex lens. So the magnification of the image happens due to the convex shape front lens of the camera. So a camera does not only use a convex lens but it also uses a concave lens. Then we have microscopes, yes, J. Modern microscopes involve more than just one set of lenses. They have an objective lens that sits near the object and an ocular lens that sits closer to your eye. This adds to the object's magnification. Okay. So the lens of the eye is normally magnifies like 10 times while 40 times is magnified by a standard objective lens. So in general, there are three types of lenses for microscopes. So the end lens results in a magnified or reversed image of this three. Now, this one is the common uses for our concave lens. First is the eyeglasses, which is also used in convex lens. So for convex lens, eyeglasses is used to treat uh, long-sightedness, while in concave lens, Eyeglasses is used to treat problem for nearsightedness or myopia. Then we have also camera. As I mentioned, camera does not uh, use only convex lens, but it also uses a concave lens. So the picture enhanced in the frame is performed by introducing several lenses, one after the other, like convex lens is preceded by a concave lens, followed by a concave convex shape lens. Then we have flashlights. So the concave lens is used to magnify the light created by the light beam. So which raises the diameter of the beam by diverging the light ray from the hollow side to the other side, rendering the light ray broader and bigger. And then the last one are the pit holes. Are you familiar with pit holes? Yes. Well, where do you usually you um, see pit holes? On doors. Oh. Yes, in doors, in hotel rooms. Or your house, does your house have pit holes? The doors in your house? No. Okay. 
Fit holes are contours. Provide a panoramic view of items on the other side of the door, acting as a safety device. But Sometimes, um, other uh, houses do not use peep holes because if you can see things outside from the inside, those people outside can also um, see what is inside your house. Any question? So, from the concepts of lenses, the terminologies in lenses, uses of lenses, further clarification? No, no ma'am. Ma okay, not. Let's test your brain if you really understand our lesson and if we really achieve our objectives. So get a one whole sheet of pad paper. I'll give you 10 minutes to answer this one. First is define what the vex and the concave lens is. Next is differentiate the image formed by a convex and a concave lens. For number three, you have to cite two examples to where a concave lens is used and two examples for convex lens is used, except those which are already given. And number four is you make a ray diagram. Okay, time's up. Pass your papers forward. Okay, so I'm going to check this one, and as I said, this will be served as your attendance for today. Goodbye everyone. Thank you and goodbye Mom Villanueva.